When we talk about the carousel, we should just break down what it consists of. So it contains a title, subtitle, and a button. Those are the text. And then we have an image. And just below it, we have an indicators or the carousel bullets. And we have next and previous buttons. I'm not to worry much about those, honestly. Those buttons are not being made dynamic. However, those are have to be. And the image itself, definitely, it should be. So let's just get back to our code so we can make those dynamic. The indicators themselves are almost identical except this here, which is the index, and here, which is the active. So I will loop through all recipes that we have, but I'm not too worried much about the, the details, right? Because I'm not going to echo or print out any title or any image here. I'm just trying to simply go through the same count as the carousel recipes. So let's just, let's just go through each of them by doing a range, which is going to begin from zero. And then I'm going to take the count of those. Since we began from zero, so I'm going to deduct one. And this is going to be like the carousel recipe index then i can use this index easily inside my items so let's just go ahead and take this example because this is the most comprehensive one i will take it up and i will delete those because i don't need them anymore and let's just equal out the index so in this case this is here an index and this is here an index and then we just have this which should be unique right but i will make it in a second for now let's just agree on that this one is going to be dynamic or as it's going to be active only for maybe the second item or the first item whatever you wish so in my case i'm just going to say if the index is equal equal to one then i'm going to echo out an active otherwise i'm not going to echo anything at all so this is a ternary operator you can do this immediately here with this being done right now we just have to move forward and do this one so let me just copy this since we are going to use the same exact thing and then I'm going to delete this one. And here we have the items. Again, let's just take a look at what's different between the first item and the second one. And most likely you will just see that out loud that here we have an active because it's the second item. And definitely the text itself as a content and image is different. So I will take this as a comprehensive example again. And then I'm just going to wrap it with the code I just copied. So in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this. And then inside that, we don't need this, but let me copy it. We don't need the H1, but we need it here. So this is like the title and just below that we have what the excerpt yes correct so we have the excerpt here and then this button is going to be dynamic but right now we don't have like a sub view or actually a dedicated view for a single recipe show so i'm not going to do the link right now i'm going to leave it for later for the images i'm not to worry about those for now since we didn't do them even database wise so i'm just going to go ahead and just print out a random between one and six, because I know for a fact I have six images inside my public folder. If we to go, I have like six pictures and all of them ending with the same extension. So it's simply I'm going to generate a random image for now. And bear in mind that we have to go with the good practices and we have to write here an alternative text. So I'm going to copy the title of the recipe and I'm going to place it right now here. So as you can see, we're almost done except that we have to change this one and we have to write something if it's empty. I would like to go with an idea of just making the second item as active so here we have the item itself as a variable out of this loop so let's just take the index out of it as, as with any for each and then simply i can use it here so if the index is equal equal to one since we made, made this one one then i'll just equal active otherwise we are just going to leave it as an empty so as you can see now things are fine maybe except one thing i honestly don't like the idea of making for else inside the carousel because you can do so you can like display I don't know, like a placeholder slide if you don't have any recipes and you can go fancy with it and you can do anything you wish. Maybe perhaps you can have the same item here and you can have here like a template image and then the text would be no recipes found for now. Please check out later or such kind of thing. And this maybe a button goes to the contact us or something else. But in my case, I have a tendency toward just make it as normal for each. Let me just click that and here without empty and then int for each and in this case i'm not worrying much about the carousel because honestly if we don't have any recipes let's just avoid the whole carousel in the first place so let's just wrap everything with an if statement and then i will end it like this i'll get that content back and then we are just going to say if we have a count for the recipes otherwise please don't even try to display the whole recipes so with that being said this one is done this one is done everything is perfect except we have to delete the second item which is useless right now and our carousel by this is done i just noticed a mistake when i was deleting this that we have we used to have something here which is the text end and text start which is only for the first and last items so let's just do this because this is really really fun so inside the carousel caption here this one is going to be empty if this is the first item then it should be having like a start as a text and if it's the last item then it should be like an end thankfully laravel inside the blade 
it just provides us with a dynamic variable inside any for each, which is called loop. Let me just introduce you to loop. So if you just die and dump of this variable, so we can just see the content of that, of this variable, and if I to go back and refresh, simply it just spit out what it does contain. So it contains the iteration, the index itself, how many remaining items, the count, if it's first, if it's last, if it's odd and even and everything. So in my case, I'm interested in the first and last, and those flags are going to help me so much. So let's just do it right here. So if it's like the loop first, then what we are going to do, guys, we're going to just simply display the text as a start. Otherwise, bravo mo, okay, start. Otherwise, I'm not going to do anything with it. Now, one more, one more item, which is simply if the loop is the end, which is the end of it, I'm going to place this class. So with that being said, it should work just fine. Let me code reformat it and get back to my website and hit refresh. What? And okay, I made some mistake here. So let me just get back. And and we didn't have end seriously. I don't know. Let me just write it again. Let me die and dump the whole variable because I obviously made a mistake here. And it's last. Okay, okay, my bad. It's not end. It's last. I bet some of you guys while watching while watching the video like immediately spot it out. Anyways, let's get back and see it. And it works just fine. This is the middle indeed. And this is the start indeed. And what's cool is that these details are coming straight out from our database. 